I mean, just watching this, it was just unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Next time, director or cinematographer contacts me and asks me for a recommendation for a colorist, I'm just going to point him to this video. <laughs> I'm just going to say, go watch this. <laughs> and you can choose. <laughs> Actually, you turn, I think you just made color training the best color training facility in the world because what makes a really color you know, training facility good is the work of their students. And I think this is by far by far the best you know quality student work that i've seen i mean this is just unbelievable we never had anything like this guys i'll be honest with you we, I'm, I'm never we never had a, such a concentration like an amount of this good work you know which is just kind of credit to really like you know everything that happened to put together and, and you know see the results are here the results are visible and um, you know for me, the hardest job was not to say, okay, whom are we going to pick, you know, because we decided that, you know, top 10 are going to get automatically, you know, entry into the Summer Look Academy that is coming up in August. Um, and, you know, they will automatically get a free entry into the Summer Look Academy. And then, you know, so, so the debating started, you know, like, how are we going to do this and so on. So, uh, <laughs> so I love it. I love it. I love it. So guys, um, uh, after a long, you know, the kind of debating and deciding, you know, we did put together a list, you know, that of, of 10 people that we think, you know, have done exceptionally well. And I think, you know, we should definitely recognize their work. So, um, um, you know, without uh, further ado, I would like to start uh, basically, you know, from, you know, number 10 down to number one.
a very important part of um, Winter Look Academy is actually, um, you know, our uh, f the fact that we are working in a group. And, um, you know, this is really, um, you know, what makes the difference, you know, that, that, you know, we are actually like inspiring one another, you know, we're, we, and, 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 and that's a big part of, of the concept of teaching that we have, um, you know, so, so, you know, this is not a, you know, uh, it's a competitive environment in a positive way, you know, where you inspire one another, where you kind of, you know, look at each other work and you just say like, oh my God, you know, this is just, you know, the, I, this is possible. I want to do this. This is really how I want to move on. Um, so uh, uh, basically, that was um, that was uh, number uh, ten, and I'm moving down to number nine, and this is Jack Manzi. And this, let's see what Jack did. He said, for this film, I used Cries and Whispers from 1972 as a reference, as it was also psychological horror. I used Fuji Eterna 8543 with it as the negative stock because I wanted intense color and strong contrast look of something like Black Swan. I used Kodak Vision Premiere 2393, right? He went for that, you know, he went for, you know, Premiere stock. To further enhance the contrast and rich blacks, I use subtractive color to add a bit of yellow through it. I actually really love, you know, like you know, the, 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 you know, these these kind of little kind of you know, um, you know, descriptions are really super important for us, you know, to kind of understand really, you know, what's happening and how looks should look. So one more time, here is assignment from Jack Manzi. Wow, wow. That kind of, you know, that last shot when she turns her head around is just absolutely amazing. You know, that look in her eyes is just absolutely fantastic. You know, really, really well done, Jack. Really good job. Okay, now we're moving down to number eight. Um, on number eight, we have uh, Lucas Mulder. So let's see, you know, what Lucas did. So his project that he worked on is called It's All in the Eyes and it was shot on an Epic and he used a negative stock Fuji Eterna 8543. Um, he printed to also to 2383 and he used some ENR process. Okay, so you see this is another sign, you know, like when someone's kind of trained in film, they don't say just, you know, they, they specify what type of bleach bypass they used. <laughs> I love it. So he said the first act of the film is very warm and saturated mirroring the emotions of the protagonist as she falls in love, as the arc of the film progresses and she begins to question her lover, the warmth begins to ebb away. In this, the final scenes of the film, the protagonist's world is quickly falling apart, the colors are much more muted and desaturated, the bright red jacket which has been the protagonist's trademark is now dull and muddied. Overall, the contrast is quite low with lots of roll-offs in blacks. So fantastic, let's have a look one more time on Lucas's piece. Unbelievable. Really well done, Lucas. You know, really, really good. You know, this is such a, you know, fantastic piece. So, we're moving down further to number seven. You know, and this was a very, very unusual look. I have to tell you, like, this one definitely caught my eye. And uh, it is done by Michelle Ricosa. So, basically, 
Let's see what Michelle did. So the intention of the cinematographer for this project is to create mysterious, foggy and moody pictures. He wants the look to be filmic, gritty and timeless, lifted blacks and a fair amount of film grain. The interiors are lit with candles and strong blue light source while the exteriors with a natural light available after the sunset. I look at the reference from the work of old masters to find the right ochre yellow and his cyan complementary. For the blacks of my look, I want to use similar tone as the browns base common to ancient old paintings. Interesting, interesting, which is I see as timeless. I made a palette of the complementary color harmony combination of two tones to shift the hues of the warm, cold light shadows and the scenes of those um, target values. Negative stock she used, which is Kodak 5219 and this is now number, what did we say? 10, 9, 8, uh, 7. Okay, let's go. Comment the wild if you hear it. Hear it, Ron. Fantastic! I love it! I love it! What a, what a great piece! Okay, now we're moving to number six. On, and on number six, uh, we have a uh, Luca Enrico Canessa. You know, this is absolutely, you know, wonderful work here. Actually, what is interesting, it's a little story behind this. So this project uh, got stuck because of budget issues. Don't we know? We have all of those, right? And I have this footage on my drive for many months. And in the preliminary stage, I was told to make it look cinematic since it's a fashion film shoot for a Korean bags brand. It was shot in Palm Springs in the desert. So I immediately thought about no country for old men. It's a great issue, yeah. Which has so many desert locations. I try to emulate um, that specific look um, with use of both negative and print lights in the way we learned in the Winter Look Academy. I also used halation, MTF, and a bit of waiver along with film grain lab. I played around in each clip with the subtractive color tool in look designer. I did some windows too. The main challenge was to retain white highlights while having green shadows. So let's have a look at Lucas's work. She believes beauty is strictly connected to love. my god i i really love that skin tone you know like in that one shot you know it was just absolutely amazing but you know we're moving down to number five so on number five we have a uh, reka hain and basically it is one of the most you know bravest looks that you know i've seen you know from anybody and i really had to kind of you know credit her for that for being like a really brave to break the mold and use color in a really really bold way so narcos is said is a drama of a father who's into gambling, getting easy money by cheating on others and risking his family's financial stability every day. They, as a family, live day by day as he doesn't work. So he makes a final big mistake. He opts for putting his son's education savings to the bed, trusting his friend's tip, what later cost him his family as a final punishment for him. We used shades of blue to be dominant color to symbolize the emptiness and darkness of his everyday life in general. Um, the Ninhili so-called freedom he has. We used greenish yellow when he wanted to suggest that they are onto something bad again. The main colors were green, orange, red and blue. So let's go and let's have a look at uh, the um, work from... <laughs>
hogy a jó kurva életbe. <laughs> oh my god, you know what that amazing, amazing and, and brave looks from Reka. Reka, well done. Well done. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're getting now to the top, right? You know, so this is like, you know, who is going to be like, you know, in the top and, you know, like, a, let's see who's on number four. And as you can see, it is Niraj Mundra. Okay, really amazing work really really amazing work from him i have to tell you this is just such a high quality and stylish production um so basically the lead character of this series yudhvir is a descendant of your royal blood and is a carefree and promiscuous college-going student he learns after being slapped by a police officer that real power lies in politics this changes his attitudes towards life and he's now focused on being a successful politician he doesn't think twice even if he has to kill someone to achieve his goals that's the bearded look therefore my look is high contrast when we show his younger years in flashback. It's cold and green and cyanish mid-tone based neutrals. Slightly muted saturation gamma too. Thereafter, for the present shaved look, when we show him in his successful days as a man in his prime and the cusp of becoming a politician, I have chosen to give it more warm and strong contrast as for the past. So we've chosen to present to be warm uh, for two aspects. It depicts the lead's character state of life, political success, and I needed to separate the past and look since the storytelling is non-linear. Absolutely beautiful, like, you know, such a wonderful thinking, you know. Let's have a look how this looks in really in practice. That's here is one more time submission and final assignment from Niraj Mundra. Wow, 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 wow. Actually, you know, it really, you know, makes you want to watch them. You know, you want to know, like, where can I see this stuff? <laughs> where can I find it? <laughs> great, Niraj, great. Okay, so who do you think is on number three? Okay, who do you think is number three? Let's have a look. Number three, it's Edgar Flores. <laughs> Oh my God, Edgar, I love the whole story. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to show everything you submitted. You know, it, it was really, really most beautiful, like, you know, background story about this movie. So let me just kind of help you. Like, so synopsis is that, you know, um, you know, that filmmakers are trying to submit a movie into film festivals, you know, and then that doesn't take. And then they lie that it was directed by some famous director who's been hiding for the last 15 years. And finally, you know, the feature gets accepted because festival requires the presence of that director and now they have to go and you know try to find the director and you know convince him you know to basically you know uh, you know basically you know to, to attend the film festivals it's a total roller coaster <laughs> you know it's a, a anger excitement happiness envy greedy everything happens right so what he wanted to do with color my intention was that the audience perceives the emotions of the moments and the characters that go from anxiety mystery hope excitement happiness and the like so the color begins with the disappointment of being rejected and a relentless possibility of doing a sort of cheating um, to get their films accepted and the searching for whereabouts of the old director this was supported with blues and worn out yellows when they finally reached the director you know, and the palette starts gaining life when they convince him to go to the festival. It's beautiful. I mean, think about it. Like, you know, how, you know, he's telling the story through the color or how he's helping tell the story through the color. This is really exactly what I always really was hoping, you know, and there is like a, just a, like a note that unfortunately the director of this movie has passed away. And, and I think he kind of really wanted to dedicate, you know, this work, this extra work to him. So, you know, thank you, you know, Edgar for doing this. I think this is such a beautiful, you know work you did i i want to just show to everybody you know at your submission so here is edgar flores as well.
Oh, identidad tomada. <laughs> you gotta watch this now. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay. So, who do you think it's on number two? Who's number two, right? You know, let's see. Okay, and this is... Oh my god, it's Jens Harms! Actually, you know, I have to tell you, this was a, such a close kind of, you know, decision between who was number two and who was number one, you know, I have to tell you, like, it was a really, really amazing, like, you know, both of these works are, like, absolutely fantastic, you know, and I, I can't, you know, we were amazed by it. I haven't actually showed these images to anybody who hasn't responded with, you know, total amazement. You know, I have friends who are, like, a really big cinematographers, you know, and I kind of enjoyed when they come to my house and, you know, we're not really working, we're just, you know, having a little social moment, you know, to show them some of the, as these images and to hear their opinion and, and it's just unbelievable um, so let me let's go back to, to basically you know what Jens did so this is a retro sci-fi ghost power mystic social realismus <laughs> this is a new genre <laughs> Just invented. <laughs> okay. The dusty old spirits of the ancient Ansi sisters take over the little China girl called Boy in order to control her rather magnific magnificent, destructive, and dangerous aunt, Dark aunt Darkite. They need her cruel wisdom in their fight against humanity gone bad. For the final assignment, I shot a little test scene in the streets of Berlin. I was, uh, it was shot using Canon EOS C200 in 4K Cinema Raw Light. I was very lucky to have two wonderful actresses, the Elwa sisters Elizabeth and Sarah. Sarah did also wonderful styling, makeup and wardrobe job. Thank you very much. It was, you know, for the, all the rest of the crew. The look was inspired um, by the original film Blade Runner 1982 by Ridley Scott and Jordan Cronwell. Uh, I, I went for more saturated colors, split toning, stark contrast, you know, for this exciting kids fantasy adventure project. The warm toes stand, stand for the energy movement to life, where the greenish tone symbolizes the poisonous environment and generally the bad spirits. This is an adventure film. Uh, lots of action sequences involve fire and explosion. Beside the ordinary neat video, halation, frequency separation, MTF and so on, so on. So basically, you know what, you know, I have to tell you guys, you know, I, I know that this movie hasn't been made, but if I was to see this as a treatment, I would definitely light it. I would definitely go like, yeah, we want to have it. So if anybody from Netflix is watching this, you know, get in touch with me. I'll put you, uh, I'll give you Jens Ham's email. So... <laughs> Uh, fantastic fantastic i jens you're special man i always knew this i can't tell you like this is such a beautiful work okay okay and now we come to number one and you know it's a really like to me it's a little as a surprise because you know this you know student you know is not necessarily like you know the most you know you know outgoing you know so you know um, the students usually a little in the background and these are the people sometimes you have to pay attention to it's the sometimes the quiet ones they say okay and I won't keep you much longer um, you know in a, in, a, in a kind of you know as a secretive who it is so let me just you know basically show you ladies and gentlemen uh, winter look Academy 2021 you know the best assignment and final submission for the year 2021 is no one else but this is Mimi Lu <laughs> Mimi! Yeah! My God! My God! What an amazing piece of work, Mimi, you did here. So let's kind of have a little bit look what's happening. So Michael 
a boxer comes in a hypnosis session to face the fear caused by his childhood trauma. So it was shot um, using log C, raw, Ari log C, right? Uh, she applied MTF with a negative Kodak 5219 500T and then she printed to 2383. I created the cooler tone plus low key lighting to make an universally feeling of the environment. I also want this look to be a little bit over the reality since this is a hypnosis session, but I still want to keep a distance from the fantasy and dreaming sequences. I tried to keep the roundness in the contrast to increase the painting, you know, surreal feeling uh, at the same time. Stay with the character and not go too much with the visual. MTF process also provides enough softness in highlight details and enhances the film feeling. All the reference stills I chose all have a little surreal feeling but stays in the reality. I love how soft the edge of the shadow is but still keeps a contrast. Okay, let's kind of now really watch this. I mean, this is just, guys, you know, you're all gonna agree, it just looks absolutely fantastic. I've always been afraid. Feed your fear. Make it a fire. A roar. 